Democrats have many fears, politically incorrect words, tweets, voter ID laws, weather change, and of course, guns and other inanimate objects. The list really goes on and on, but the one thing they fear the most is the truth, transparency. It's one thing for Hillary to lie. It's another for her apologist to continue her dirty work. And when it comes to lap dogs, Senator Tim Kaine snuggles up in that pantsuit better than anyone. Chuck, let me just say this. I'm gonna jump right to the punchline. I have heard Hillary Clinton say over and over again, when I've been sitting next to her and when I've watched her on TV, that with respect to the emails, I made a mistake and I've learned something and I wouldn't do it again and I've heard her apologize. Hey Tim, apologizing and admitting she lied are two very different things. You can't just say sorry. Shoot, that's relationship rule number one, right? If you don't know what you're sorry for, how can you really apologize? Oh, what if you keep doing it? Keep lying, keep deleting, keep being a sketchball? You're not sorry. Hillary has never been sorry for the crap she's done. She's sorry she got caught. But for the love of God, Tim, don't blame this on Fox News Sunday's Chris Wallace or FBI Director James Comey. What's your angle? I did hear that back and forth, and I think Chris Wallace and, and Hillary were sort of talking past each other last week. She was saying what Director Comey acknowledged to be true, that when she spoke to the FBI, when she was talking to the FBI, the FBI thought her answers in that setting were truthful. Really, Tim? Are you sure? Did the FBI say she was truthful? Because I didn't hear that. So let's listen again. Secretary Clinton said she never sent or received any classified information over her private email. Was that true? Our investigation found that there was classified information sent. So it was not true. It, right. That's what I said. Secretary Clinton said there was nothing marked classified on her emails either sent or received. Was that true? That's not true. The Secretary Clinton said, I did not email any classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. Was that true? No, there was classified material emailed. Hmm. Tim, any final thoughts? Oh, yeah. Hillary is going to learn from it. I know that this is something that uh, she's learned from, and, um, and we're going to be real transparent. Absolutely. So what he means there is Hillary has learned it's getting harder and harder to get away with things. Next time, she do, will do a better job of covering her tracks. Like next time she sells weapons to jihadists in Libya and Syria, perhaps? Weapons flows going over to, to Syria are being pushed uh, by Hillary Clinton uh, into um, jihadists uh, within Syria, including ISIS. Uh, that's there in those emails. Folks, every Goliath has a David. Achilles had a hill, heel, Superman a kryptonite, vampires have garlic, witches have salt. If you want to take down the Democrats, the progressives, the liars, the Clintons, all you have to do is shine a little light and sprinkle a little truth. Hillary hasn't held a press conference in over 250 days. Press her, but be aware of her new defense mechanism, the short circuit. Director Comey had said that my answers in my FBI interview were truthful. That's really the bottom line here. I may have short-circuited it, and for that, I, uh, you know, will try to clarify because I think, you know, Chris Wallace and I were probably talking past each other. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, instead of fessing up to a lie, which she will never do, she's going to employ a new tactic, the golly, I forgot charade. But isn't that just as troubling? It's easy to short-circuit with so many lies in that head of hers. That's the thing about lying. Once you tell one lie, you have to keep lying and lying to cover up your initial lie. She's on a 40-year lie streak, and it's going to get trickier to cover her tracks. It seems we've found Teflon Hillary's weakness, lie overload. An Obama appointee in the federal government says he was marginalized and even threatened by his superior simply because he tried to raise the alarm about classified information that resided on Hillary Clinton's private email server. Our Catherine Herridge has that exclusive tonight. It was personal blowback to me, to my family, to uh, my office. Few people know more about the Clinton emails and the fallout than Charles McCullough, the former internal watchdog for the U.S. intelligence community. What should the American public know about those 22 top secret Clinton emails? I've heard people say this is overblown. I've heard people say uh, this is much ado about nothing. Had the information been released, there would have been harm to national security. So putting lives at risk. Absolutely. Sources and methods 
lives, operations. Speaking exclusively to Fox, McCullough says he went to Director of National Intelligence James Clapper about a year before the presidential election. The intelligence agencies had just found their classified information in the Clinton emails. He read through these affidavits very thoroughly, and he said this is extremely reckless. And he mentioned something about uh, the campaign would have, uh, will have heartburn about that or something. Shortly after, McCullough says his team was marginalized. You felt you were on your own in this. I was totally on my own, and uh, I was told by senior officials to keep the director out of it. You drafted this letter in January 2016. Sure did. In the letter, McCullough told Congress that emails beyond top secret passed through the former Secretary of State's unsecured personal server. All of a sudden, I became uh, a shill uh, of the right. I was told by members of Congress, be careful, you're losing your credibility. There are people out to get you. By February 2016, Clinton campaign emails released via WikiLeaks suggest McCullough was a target. I think there was certainly a coordinated strategy. Uh, that I, I, in fact, I... I not only think it, I, I think it uh, very, very much so. Based on evidence? Yes. Even though the FBI email investigation was far from complete, the Clinton campaign nailed down its talking points. Was there an effort to deliberately mislead the public about the classified emails? Absolutely. There was an effort, on the, certainly on the part of the campaign, to mislead people into thinking that there was nothing to see here. But frankly, the thing that disappointed me the most was uh, the president saying, there's classified and then there's classified. A lot of people in the intel community spend a, a lot of time keeping secrets secret. And to sort of inject that sense of confusion into people, I, I don't think was, was altogether responsible. As election day approached, McCullough says the threats went further, singling him out and another senior government email investigator. You were given a warning? It was told that we would be the first two to be fired uh, with her administration, that uh, that was definitely going to happen. Is that how it's supposed to be? No, I was, in this context, a whistleblower. I was explaining to Congress, I was doing exactly what they had expected me to do, and all of a sudden, I was the enemy. More than 2,100 classified emails passed through Clinton's personal server, and to this day, no one is accountable. If you had done this, what would have happened to you? I'd be sitting in Leavenworth right now. Fox News asked a spokesman for the Clinton campaign, the office of a senior Senate Democrat, as well as the former director of national intelligence for comment, but there was no immediate response. McCullough recently retired after 26 years of government service. He told Fox News today that he is grateful now to tell his story, Tucker. And that is a story. Catherine Harris, thank you You're very welcome. much for that. Richard Goodstein advised Hillary Clinton's 2008 and 2016 campaigns, and he joins us tonight. Uh, Richard, this isn't really a political story so much as it's a story about bad government, corruption. I mean, it's kind of a classic whistleblower story. Here's a guy, he's a permanent government employee, he's the inspector general, he's not some low-level character. And he finds wrongdoing, he brings it to light, and his job is threatened. I mean, I, that seems like something you want to get to the bottom of. So, the predicate for your question, finding wrongdoing and so forth. I, let me tell you why I take issue with it. I, I will take serious issue the minute that you look into a real threat to national security, which is the president taking the Russian foreign minister and ambassador in the Oval Office, shooing out U.S. press, inviting in Russian press, and disclosing to them top secret information that did disclose where Israeli assets were dealing with Middle East agents. That's when I will take this whole thing seriously, because we know that happened. Because, okay? So in other words, because you disapprove of the current president's behavior, nothing that happened before his no, election is... but I'm just saying into? that's known... What you're talking about is something okay. that's theoretical. And you talked about wrong. Well, where's the theoretical part? So we know that there were classified... Stop. We Stop. don't. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. James Comey mm -hmm. testified under oath. The only time he testified under oath, he said there were three, three documents that were marked classified. We know at least one of which was a condolence call to no, the no, president no, of no, Malawi. You're, you're, wait, hold on. You're, you're missing it. Well, I'm not. Th this is the inspector general whose job it is to keep track of this, who says that there was a large amount of classified information, as distinct from documents marked classified, but information from the intelligence agencies gathered by them on her server, right. and that he perceived this as a threat to American national security. So I, I don't think there's any evidence he's some partisan axe grinder. He's a permanent federal employee. Yeah. 
And he is told that he's going to be fired for doing this if, if and when Hillary is elected. That's why we have whistleblower statutes to protect the freedom of people like that to tell the truth so our government doesn't become third world. Yeah. Does that make sense? I I'd love to cross-examine him and these people who said that they were in a position to say for sure that he was going to be fired. That sounds like the kind of thing that, you know, at the end of an administration you kind of are fearful of. But, but again, uh, this all will be taken seriously when the six people in the Trump White House, from Bannon, Trebus, who use private emails and private servers, but, but is are really, kind of examined. But is it really as simple as partisan tit for tat? I mean, I, by the way, I would say that if there's ever found to be classified material on a private server operated by a current White House employee, I'll be the first to jump on him and say, you can't do that. That's right. illegal, by the way. But now that you've said that the Russian government was trying to hack, you know, are the greatest threat we face, sure. trying to hack into computers in this country, private and public, it doesn't bother you at all that there was classified information on Hillary Clinton's unsecured private server? I mean, I'm serious, yeah, actually. No, as a literal matter, the State Department server was hacked by China and Russia. We know that. That's a fact. We, we actually have no evidence that well, Hillary Clinton's the email White server House, was hacked. The White House servers were hacked by the right. Chinese military. And, and I mean, this is really common. I shockingly, agree. we have zero evidence that Hillary Clinton's server was okay. hacked. I, I would say it's against the odds, but that's true. Okay. But I guess that's not, that's not the question I asked. We spent, you know, in the, in the run-up to the election, months hearing from Democrats, it's not a big deal. What are you, right-wing crazy person? But now that she's lost and gone away and off her book tour, can we just admit kind of crazy behavior to put this kind of stuff, classified intelligence, yeah. on your private unsecured server? I mean, can we admit so that she now? didn't, quote, put anything on it, right? She was receiving emails from hundreds I mean, of states. She set up the server. No, uh, I mean, come on, I don't uh, want to relitigate this, but can't you just be honest and say, I, I, that honest. was a big, like, what was that? And by the way, if you did that and you heard the IG say it, you'd be in jail. Yeah, I, I have a theory as to what it was, which traces back to you know, how the, the Clintons had their private quarters kind of poured over during the, during the 90s. But that's a different story. I have no basis for that. All I'm saying is that I don't think she was, she was reckless. Okay. She was, certainly didn't do anything illegal. The statutes either call for intent to disclose or espionage. I don't think her worst critics think she did either of those. Yeah. Okay. I think we'd both be in jail if we did it. But thank you. The My pleasure. Game attempt, as always.